Hi guys and welcome to another YouTube video by me. I wanted to just crack on and just film um, whilst I know what I want to film. Apologies for obviously like I said the last video being so random, so messy for me being a mess. I'm st I am still a mess today um, but at least I have something on my face and I don't look quite so grim. <laughs> I also like this background is so not doing it for me but my bedroom is an unfinished, like, not nowhere near finished, basically, to what I want. Um, I've been focusing more on, like, my lounge and stuff rather than my bedroom. As long as I've got a bed to sleep in and somewhere to do my makeup, I'm alright. Um, but it has got to a stage, it's stressing me out. And, like, there's just stuff everywhere, which, if I sit here, you can't really see. Um, yeah, it's just not, like, it's not it's not okay but yeah i wanted to do a video about like mental health and stuff i briefly spoke about this in my previous video mental health is a topic that is quite important to me and i want to be quite honest and vocal about i want to be able to talk about like my own experiences and i want to be able to share advice i don't know i don't really have any advice um but like those sort of things, I want to be able to talk about it honestly and normally. I don't want it to be embarrassing. I don't want it to have that stigma. Like, and I kind of just want to use my space on the internet, which includes like my social media like platforms and like my blog, um, to talk about this stuff. And I have done some blog posts on my mental health before, and that will tie into to a lot of what I'm going to be telling you and talking about. But this is kind of like my mental health journey uh, and that's I'm sure probably what I've named the video but it's basically going to be talking about obviously from start to finish but I, not that we're finished because it's still ongoing but from how this all started to now to my experiences to things I've been through to things I've like what I've done to help myself what others have been like work everything I'm going to be lying on the table I want to do this in the right way and I want to do this in the sense that I feel better opening up about it um, and I also want it to be so if people can relate then that's good because I find it very I love personally reading like people's posts or watching people's videos and all of those things about their journeys and their stories and thinking oh actually I've, I've been through that oh yeah I relate to that and it makes you feel a bit more like oh okay not just me and I think it's very important because there's so many things that we all experience that we think is just like us and isn't normal and it's just a load of bullshit really. So this whole journey for me started when I was 13 years old. I kind of self-diagnosed myself with depression I suppose. I don't think I did diagnose this like I didn't think I had depression. I didn't know what depression was really. Um, probably for a, quite a few years after that but I know looking back and looking at what I went through and the experiences I was having, uh, I know that at that age, what I was doing and what I was experiencing was depression. And it's a shame. But when you were, when I was, say, 13, 14, so what's that like? I can't do maths, but like 12 years ago. So say 12 years ago. God, that's insane. <laughs> yeah, say like 12 years ago, mental health wasn't spoken about the way it is now. I think the younger generations and all the generations to come are very, very lucky um, in the sense that mental health is so understood, whether it's just anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, bipolar, all this, the list goes on, like we all know it goes on, but everything is spoken about so much more. There isn't that stigma anymore. There is a little bit of stigma, like there always will be, but I think by the time like my kid like my kids have kids, I think that it's gonna be so like normal to just talk about this stuff and it just that is what it is and under like but obviously when I was a teenager, unfortunately this wasn't spoken about. Depression was very much people that wanna to top themselves and not that that's a nice way to put it, but to put it bluntly, it was people that wanted to kill themselves and that was that. That was what and you were going to be or people in a psych hospital or you know the extreme there was never the level like i didn't know there was levels to it i didn't know there was different diagnosis i didn't know anything if i'm honest and i think i don't know how old i was but the first key time like and i always remember this the first key moment when i did question about depression was when i was online and 
I was completing like the questionnaires. So you would have questionnaires. So if you Google, like I'm sure they still exist now, that you Google, do I have depression? And then you get these questionnaires and it's very much like on a scale of one to 10, how likely will you kill your, like, do you want to commit suicide? On a scale of one to 10, how like, like, how likely are you to hurt yourself? On a scale of one to 10, you know, you get the picture. It was very much them and then it would give you the score and it would tell you. And I was completing questionnaire after questionnaire after questionnaire and they were all flagging up. You are depressed. You need to see a doctor. And I remember just slamming my laptop shut and just going, no, thank you. No, not dealing with this. So for years, I was like that. I did not want to talk about it. I did not want to admit to it. I didn't want to deal with it in the right way. I thought I could deal with it myself. I thought I was just being a dramatic teenager, that I would, you know, I'll be all right. And that was that. So there was a day when I did a questionnaire on my actual GP's website and that obviously immediately flagged up that I need to contact them. They tried contacting me and I was just like, nope, I'm not dealing with this. And I was in such a low place, like I don't remember much of it, but I know that I was self-harming. I know I, I thought about committing suicide several times. I thought that was going to be the best thing. I didn't see the point of being alive anymore. And the only reason I kept like going was because of my parents, well, my mum, because I could never, ever do My mum's my best friend. She always like, I have the closest relationship with my mum and I would never ever want to put her through losing me with everything she's ever been through and the stuff we've been through together I wouldn't even no matter how bad my life gets and I'm still the same thought to this day no matter how bad my life gets I would never want to make hers worse and I would never want to put her through losing her daughter and that's the, the thought that's always in the back of my head and it was always in the back of my, my head back then so it's like I said that was in my early teens and I just dealt with it myself I just really I just either went out and got drunk with whoever whatever group I was hanging around with then um or I would stay in and just play games online but yeah so I lost a lot of my social life to the online world because that is what I did and I lost a lot of my friends because of this and I don't think it ever, I ever thought it mattered because I had this world that wasn't real and that was my way of dealing with things because I didn't have to face reality. The only reality I had was going to school. So obviously a lot of what I've spoken about at the moment is just obviously when I was in early teenagers. So now I'm going to kind of jump forward a bit to when I was 17 because between the ages of 13 and 17, a lot happened in my life and I had a lot of negative experiences and a lot of normal teenage stuff and some not so normal that's for another time. And I still was dealing with my depression and anxiety not knowing that's what I had, not really accepting it and not dealing with it. So like I said, we're going to fast forward to when I was 17, when I got my job at Sainsbury's. I worked part time whilst I was at sixth form. And yeah, I think that's a key moment in my life that, you know, I was starting to understand things more. I And looking back, I realised how much my mental health affected me day to day. So whilst I was working at Sainsbury's, it was great because I had you know, I was meeting new people. I was being forced to talk to strangers every day, which was like my worst nightmare. Um, I was just having to be a lot more sociable and making new friends and all of these things. Luckily for me, my parent, like my mum and um, her partner uh, worked there as well. So that was like comfort for me. But I ended up just making my own friends and that was that. But at the same time, I was in doing sixth form and I remember really struggling with sixth form. I didn't want to go. I didn't want to get out of bed in the morning. I didn't want to go like I was doing childcare so I had to go to like nursery placements and to schools and stuff and I just wouldn't go I would leave the house and pretend I was going wait for my parents to go to work and then go back home they know this now so this shouldn't be in news I've told them um but I just avoided it it was just this massive avoid and if I was a little bit like if I was a little bit late I wouldn't go because I was petrified of the outcome which to me now sounds ridiculous if you're late you're late you just deal with it um you wouldn't not go at all because that's 10 times worse but I basically just was so terrified of everything everything scared me and confronting people about stuff scared me and being honest I'd rather tell a massive lie and then just be honest and say oh yeah I wasn't feeling well yeah I was like I was just running a little bit late I would just lie and just be like oh this has happened and this has happened and story after story I would make up and I became such a good liar that like everyone except from I think my stepdad believed me he was the only one that knew I wasn't lying but he stopped questioning it because it wasn't his place to 
and if I was telling them when this is what was going on then he accepted that because it was my life and my choices if I was screwing things up and I realistically I did screw a lot up and I regret that so much but now I understand that was my anxiety because I was so scared and that's what it was it was fear I was had just constant fear fear of failing fear of messing up and fear of embarrassing myself that I just didn't deal with anything um and it got to a point that I asked I nearly quit college I walked out and it wasn't luckily I had the loveliest tutor um and I know anyone in my class agrees she was absolutely lovely and I think it was Miss Lee like she was literally just the sweetest laid like lady like absolutely love just lovely um and she said to me like Jess just go just get this done even if you don't get the best like grade you can do this don't waste don't wait like don't give up and I was like okay fine and I did it I got through and I got my grade and I got qualified in childcare and thank god I did um not that I've done anything with it now but yeah sorry I'll go on a bit of a tangent it's a bit hard to talk about you know do a story without the whole story so yeah so I was definitely struggling but not realizing what was actually going on I just thought I was being an idiot and that I just was bunking off all the time and just being lazy I was just a lot of it I was just thinking I was being lazy because I just wanted to sleep all the time I was just, just living on my laptop I would stay up all night I would not shower like I would just not even take my makeup off at night my skin hates me for that now <laughs> but all of these things that I bet if anyone that knows anything about like depression especially these will probably be ringing a lot of alarm bells for you and going well duh this is obvious stuff but back these many years ago like seven years ago this wasn't obvious this wasn't you we didn't have Instagram and you know all these infographics like advertised about and the hashtags on like Twitter and stuff like this wasn't the norm this wasn't anything that we knew so I didn't know I just genuinely didn't know that what was going on was my mental health and no one around me did either so going back to obviously me working at Sainsbury's and how this obviously relates into it so that sort of built up my social life a bit more I started making friends like everyone especially in like the bakery that we worked in we all just got on I'm a bit bitchy at times but everywhere is especially like when you work in retail um, I especially got close to a lad called Craig who was a few years older than me he is 100% watching this right now so hi Craig and <laughs> sorry I'm going to be speaking about you um so yeah I got quite close to the lad called Craig and he was great because he was older and he was the opposite of me he was so social he did not care who he spoke to what he said like he was just like everyone went to him for a laugh like it's just <laughs> So it was when he started giving me lifts home that we would sit and like have car chats like you all do like when you're young and to be fair we even do now and I ended up I don't know how this all sort of started but I think I just ended up opening up to him a lot about my life like you just have those those chats and I guess eventually after a long time I ended up opening up to him about so much that has happened it happened and long story short me and Craig ended up um in a relationship we were together for three years well, yeah, we were seeing each other. We were seeing each other for six months, and then we went and we got into a relationship for three years. And in that time, I was so open about my, like, and trying to learn about my mental health and what what mental health really is and what mental illness is. Right, sorry, everything's probably just moved, and I've moved, and all this has changed because my phone was dying, so I've put it on charge and. In that instance, I then managed to knock everything over. So it's what it is. <laughs> because my phone died while well, I was dying and I've got distracted, I don't know where I was, so I apologise for that. I think I was saying that I still um, didn't really do anything, basically, about my mental health side of things. I just carried on as I was, but I, if anything, I was learning more. And, like, thinking back, like, I learned, like, I was having breakdowns regularly. Um, I probably was, I think I was still self-harming, but... I had Craig trying to help me whilst we were in a relationship and um, not really understanding. I realised that every time I was drinking, I would get really depressed. Like, I would either go from one to the scale to the other. So I'd either drink and then get really depressed and just sit in the corner crying. Or I would get absolutely smashed and just not, like, get paralytic. And that's something I've massively learned. And it's why I don't really drink that much because I'm so... As much as I like drinking... And I like the idea of getting drunk and like, because I'm hilarious when I'm drunk. <laughs> the idea of then going downwards is just horrible. Um, I think I had like my first panic attack at that point in time in town. 
I was learning my triggers I think like I was learning what was setting me off and like all of these things I was learning about myself but still refused to go to the doctor and I, I just thought I can deal with this on my own and I think to some points I did there was a lot that I learned and taught myself and I think a lot of that is thankful to social media because this is when a lot of mental health stuff was getting posted online and a lot of advice was being shared and you know even if you think back to when Zoella um like did that video about the panic attacks people never used to do that people never used to talk about mental health and they never used to share advice and stuff on it so the whole internet was opening up to a new way we were getting into like instagram was new um twitter was like blowing up like bebo was no more and <laughs> the social media was being used in such a positive way as well as a negative way of course but in that sense like i learned so much about my mental health online from other people and real experiences that to me i was like i don't think i need to go to the doctors like i'll be okay i just sort of kept telling myself i'll be okay um oh, my hair is stressing me out i hate having my hair up but yeah so i just then went through the next few years of my life dealing with it in my own way um learning more about it like trying to be sensible and about it but still not going to the doctors and i was so stubborn i just really just was stubborn i didn't want to go and sit and talk to a gp about my feelings and i just dealt with it on my own and that was it and i had so many other things going on in my life that i just was like no i'm not interested in going it wasn't till years later so i haven't written down a year but i was trying to work it out so 2019 was the year that i went to the doctors and it was a year that i actually dealt with this professionally and not just myself and a lot of that was thanks to my boyfriend at the time damien so i kind of got to grips with the realization of i was so sure that i had depression and i was so sure i had anxiety i think like i was ticking every box and i was like right okay i spent years trying to deal with it myself and years telling myself i can do it and i don't need to go to the doctors it got to a point i was like yes you do you're nothing's going to change and i think my key thing was how much work work was impacting my mental health and how much mental health was in, like my mental health was impacting my work so when i started dating damien he was brilliant he himself um dealt with depression he was in therapy himself and i think that helped me because i saw someone else going through it and he was so supportive and so understanding that it was just completely like a new experience like all my exes didn't understand it as much as some of them tried to be helpful it's not the same unless you, you've been through it and that's that and i remember even when we start we literally would only just started sort of seeing each other and he drove me to the doctors to get registered at, at a new gp and he drove me to my first appointment with them and he was with me when i did my steps to well-being referral he literally was with me every step of the way and i to this day i can't thank him enough for that because i don't think i could have done it without him and taking those steps was the the biggest like challenge of my life and it was very hard for me to sit and admit and say i need help and ask for help and i think that is with anything not just mental health but just with anything in general asking for help is so sometimes the most scariest thing that anyone can do but once you've done it you feel why didn't i do that sooner so that was in may i've got all the dates written down so yeah in may i signed up i then just over two weeks later had my first appointment i then got put on sertraline the i think that's how you say it the classic <laughs> i'm sure anyone has been to the doc been on medication for depression or anxiety or any sort of mental health like mental illness would have heard of this i got put on sertraline it was very much the doctor i saw was just like oh just just put you on tablets as if like they were sweets and that's what i didn't want to do i didn't want to go i was so determined not to go on tablets but when it got offered to me i was like right we'll try it what's the harm in trying it they weren't working for me to put a long story straight and i went to another appointment and I had a different sort of different doctor and she put me on a higher dose and that was that and then that's when i got referred to steps to wellbeing again they just didn't work for me so i was on 
I went from 50 milligrams, I then bumped up to 100 milligrams and they made me so much worse. And Damien warned me because he'd been on himself and he said they made him more depressed. And I was like, oh, it's different for everyone because it is. Oh no, they made, they just, no, <laughs> they wouldn't, I can't have the words because they just were so bad for me and they made me so much worse that I just, I nearly, st I wanted to stop taking them, but I knew if I stopped taking them, I'd get ill because you've got to balance yourself out. It wasn't, I, th I think I remember, like it's hard to remember, but I know when I did my steps to wellbeing assessment, which was between um, my doses being changed, I was a lot better than when I'd obviously first signed up to it. And this is a nightmare about steps to wellbeing. Um, as much as it's great because it's free and it's on the NHS, it's also like it just shows how crap um like the funding and stuff for nhs is and how poor the mental health team is not the, them themselves but the whole process because by the time i signed up for a referral to the time i did a referral i was nowhere near in that place like i was not in that negative place anymore and it was very hard because you have to do the assessment where they scale everything from one to ten. If you've done it, you know what I mean. But it's very much like, do you want to hurt anybody else? Is anyone like, do you feel a threat to anyone else? Do you feel a threat to yourself? Like, do you want to die? Do you want to live? Do you want to harm? Do you want to not self? Like, are you this sad? Are you that sad? All those questions that basically they give you a score. And by the time you get all this done, it's like, okay, well, I'm not as bad as I was anyway. But sure, well, like I still knew I needed to do it, and that was that. Just very frustrating really but that's just unless you've got money to pay for private therapy then you kind of have to suck it up okay so i went on to 100 milligrams actually i think i'm saying that right and yeah it just made me worse so i got signed off for two weeks of work um uh, i then had another and that was in july i then had another appointment in august i was then signed off more but this gp appointment was completely different um i went to a I had another doctor again because the consistency of doctors is apparently a no-go um I saw this other doctor and I cannot recommend this doctor enough he's my favorite doctor at my GP um because of this so he sat me down and was like right what's going on he's like you're tw I was 23 I must have been 20 I think I was 23 I think I just turned 24 at this time and he literally was there like you're 24 years old what is going on you should not be in this position. You've got your whole life ahead of you. But not in like one of those patronising ways where people are like, oh, you've got your whole life. But he was like, seriously, you, I want to fix you. He was like, I want to fix you, basically. And I was like, who are you? And where have you been my whole life? He was the loveliest doctor. And I wish that everybody could have the same experience of this because he was just brilliant. And he went through everything with me. He had the most deep chat. Like none of the doctors before actually spoke to me about what was wrong. Um... They just wanted to put me on tablets and he said the same thing he was like everyone's so happy to give people tablets he's like tablets are great he's like but he's like you need to like, do the work yourself you can't just let just a tablet do everything for you and i was like okay i don't know i don't know you're the, the, you tell me that like, no one's told me any of this and um he's he's then i'll always remember this <clears throat> i'll always remember him saying this and i say it to a lot of other people that have been on tablets he said the tablets are like a battery they're there to give you the energy for you to then power on and do what you need to do they aren't there to do what you need to do they're just there for that little power to help you and to give you that push and i was like that makes sense he said you can't just take tablets expect them to work and cure everything you need to take them to you and let them help your mood balance so you can carry on and get you off the, then you can come off of them he's like because you do not want to be on tablets for a long time and i was like no i don't i didn't want to be on them in the first place and he was like right and he was like so that was a we had a massive chat about it all um he asked if i wanted to try different tablets and i said you know what i think i just want to come off them i said because i didn't want to go on them in the first place i got offered them like you said like just because i was do literally just got offered them and i don't think i need to be on them i think they're making me worse and i don't want to try other ones it's what's stupid it's like right so we half the dose again back to 50 milligrams and then i ended up easing off them um you basically just just do 50 milligrams and i think i then broke them up again and oh i can't, can't really remember but by i've gotten here by the 19th of august i was off the, the tablets completely and then i waited two months for therapy two months bear in mind i did my steps to well-being referral 
in May. I didn't, so I did my steps to wellbeing, I think, referral in May, maybe June. I didn't start therapy till October. See what I mean about the mental health services just being a bit shit. <laughs> and like I said, it's not their fault, it's just the funding and they don't have enough staff and enough support for it to be done properly. But it's very, by October, this is what really frustrated me. By October, in the time that I started my CBT sessions, I was okay. <laughs> so I went to CBT, which is cognitive behavioural therapy, the most common like therapy. It's what everyone always ends up doing in the first instance. And I have to say it did work for me. Um, it's not what I expected. And I did five sessions and I was meant to do six, but I was okay. That's the thing. By the time all this was happening, I was having quite a nice life. I was very happy in my relationship. I was doing things social, like I I was getting out and doing things and just having quite a nice life really and I wasn't in that same place so I was like it's fine we can cut these sessions short and I was a bit disappointed in a way because with CBT it's all about what like setting goals and how you're going to get to those goals and what you can do to change your mind and what you focus on and all this crap and that's all well and good but for me I've and to this day like I've always wanted to understand why I'm the way I am like I want I think the difference is if you have like one-to-one -one therapy like with a proper therapist like like you imagine like you see in the films where they sit down on a couch with a therapist that's what I expected and I didn't get that and it's a bit crap in a way because I still I've never had that I've never worked out why I have depression and anxiety why I'm the way I am as much as she helped me deal with a lot of things and realize a lot of like my triggers and you know focuses like and help me do a lot of things and change things it wasn't quite the same i still recommend it more than anything because it did work for me like it helped me massively and if anything i want to go back to therapy which is i'll catch up in a minute but yeah so that was in 2019 obviously we're in 2021 now so i my last session of cbt was on the 18th of december so not long before christmas so it was very much the end of that end of time was very much the end of 2019 that i finished therapy so moving into 2020 um i was okay like i stopped i basically in this journal so i'll talk about this journal properly in a second um i had like a daily mood tracker sort of something you should you should do like anyone that has mental health like things should do this and i really want to start this back up because i've not done this since last year but basically I would track my moods in colour codes for every single day and as you can see a lot of greens which is middles um, and only a couple of reds in the beginning of the year but by the end of January I stopped and it's very hard for me to then remember last year how I was mentally because last year was a crazy year with general life plus Covid plus so many other things have happened. Oh. I've sat back because my my um backside <laughs> so moving on we're in 2021 now and I, i'm unfortunately saying that my mental health is atrocious right now um i say that while smiling because all i ever do is just cover everything with laughter and smiles but it, i am in a really negative place and i've been trying to i've referred myself back to steps well-being but i haven't heard from them typical um i do question whether i need to go back to doctors and go on tablets again but just the idea of what the tablets were like last time and even if i go on different ones i just i'd rather not take medication to try and help i'd rather just get on with it which i think is partly why i want to do focus on my blog and instagram and youtube and all these side of things because they're a great distraction for me and i like having something to work towards and i like having goals and something to to, to do really and i think that's a really important thing is we all need hobbies and it's a shame i gave these up I went to check the time and then I think I've moved the camera again. Sorry, it's probably stressing some people out. Um, I was just checking the time because I know it's the sun's starting to set and I think the lighting's starting to change and that's stressing me out because I've been talking so much. Um, it amazes me that how long like I talk for and then I have to then edit this all out and make this a shorter video so you're not absolutely bored to death. But yeah, so at the moment my mental health isn't great um, but I'm in a place where I know how to deal with it and it's not has to be a big deal and it really stresses me out that people make it a bigger deal than it is so that is my journey as such from when i was 13 to when i was now um but i just want to go into little detail about what depression and anxiety means for me i 
definitely have touched on this in the blog post, but I think it's changed a lot. So, like I said, I have depression. Um, for me, that means I don't want to do stuff. It's very much feels and feeling lazy, but it's not laziness. I just physically cannot make myself do things. When I'm at my lowest, especially now I've got my own place, when I'm at my lowest, like, I can't get up. I will sit, like, I might get out of bed and I'll make it to the sofa and I will sit there and I can physically, at my worst, I can just sit in the same place all day and not move, not eat, not do anything, go to the toilet and that's about it and I try and keep myself hydrated. But that's, it's that thing where it looks like you're being lazy because I don't want to get changed, I don't want to shower, I don't want to eat, I don't want to, especially don't want to cook, I don't want to do anything, I don't want to leave the house, I don't like that. I don't want to see anyone sometimes I don't even want to talk to anyone I have people messaging me and I just want them to leave me alone and it's literally that as my low because I just want to be left alone um but it's also just like having random breakdowns it's being very sensitive and emotional to some of the silliest things like if someone says something the wrong way or someone doesn't talk to you or just silly things really that aren't that big of a deal it's taken them very literally it's getting frustrated over stupid things it's just annoyance um and for my anxiety for me personally i have really bad at social anxiety i hate talking to new people i refuse to make phone calls which i know actually is a lot of my generation um i just hate new things i hate change i avoid certain situations for certain reasons i panic i get very paranoid like my paranoia for some things is so high I've definitely moved again this time because my phone storage was full because I really need to clear out my apps and go through my phone <laughs> and especially if I'm doing this on my phone I need to make sure I have memory um so sorry to change positions again but I'm sure it's not that big of a deal really so I think I was talking about my anxiety and what that means for me um it's mainly just new things and scary th everything's scary like that's the only way it's and silly things are scary I found um it's changed um since covid because well especially when i work in the supermarket i started to not be able to deal with too many people around me and i wasn't even that conscious of covid it was just i think in my head i'm thinking you are idiots stay what the hell are you doing which would then frustrate me and then there's a frustration that then gets my anxiety going which then makes me more frustrated and then i would end up like just having to leave the amount of situations i walk out of because i can't deal with it i get very overwhelmed um, I struggle going shopping, I struggle even just going to the supermarket on my own, like it just freaks me, stuff freaks me out. I'm a little bit better now if things calming down, but like literally mid pandemic I did not want to go to a shop. Like people would come near me and I would just have to walk to the other side. I went to Asda um, with someone and I literally, I had to grip, they were doing the shopping and I was holding onto the trolley and all I could think about was like I just want to get out and i would just walk to the end of the, like the end of the aisle where it's quiet and just wait for them and they understood that because that's the thing like i explained that to them but i just got too stressed out just can't stand busyness can't stand loads of people being around me and it just i just get very frustrated and it's just i can't explain it another way and i know a few people are the same like i speak to my mum and she's just like that and she doesn't think she has anxiety um which actually bring up my mum that goes nicely into my next topic about family and telling family and friends unfortunately for me my mum is very old school shall i say when it comes to mental health she doesn't believe depression i well she didn't at this time so previously she didn't believe in depression anxiety she thought it was a load of bollocks and i kind of understood why because she's been around she herself it's like and this is the thing i think our generation is a little bit softer whereas her generation and the older generations they deal with it they go through shit and they deal with it and the emotions that come with it they just suck it up they haven't got a choice there was never an option to just you know get signed off work for being sad like where now as we can basically get signed off work for anything and we can get tablets for anything and we can get therapy for anything um i think it's on our plate so my mum always knew something wasn't quite right with me but she's obviously not knowing anything about mental health and not believing that that's not what she, the path she was going down and as much as i think she wanted to do what's best for me and me and my mum are so close like i've said before like me and mum are the best of friends and i love her to bits but 
she didn't understand it. That's partly why I didn't want to do anything about it or go to anyone because she didn't understand and I didn't want her to judge me. I didn't want her, not judge me, but I didn't want her to not understand and to then be put in this position. So it wasn't really, like, I think it just took a long time for me to finally open up to her. I don't know if I did this before I went to therapy or what, or I don't know. I just, I told her at some point and I think it's even to, even now, I'm only still just opening up to her honestly about it and she knows this because we have like chats in the kitchen where I tell her more and she's like oh you've never told me this and I'm like because I never thought I could and there's a lot of reasons to why she now understands it. it's not just because of me it's because of other people around her who also have their own mental health issues that she still doesn't quite believe it um not believe it but she doesn't quite she does think things can be dealt with differently and sometimes I think she thinks that you can just do that and unfortunately that's not the way but yeah that's one thing like I'll praise them especially and my stepdad because he's a lot more understanding of it um thankfully and he's helped her understand it but she's always going to be there for me no matter what because she is my mum and whether she understands it or not she does make the effort to and she will always be there um but it was very hard initially telling her what I was going through but once we got past that it was kind of like well why did I not speak to her sooner and it was, it was really annoying um if I could go back in time I would have spoke to her sooner and I probably wouldn't have gone so long without seeing anybody or doing anything but it is what it is obviously I am very open about this I'm putting it on the internet like I said I don't hide this at all I'm very open with my family about it now my friends like to me it's just quite a normal thing it's part of me it's part of my mental health is who I am and if you don't like that that's not my problem it doesn't change the person i am on a day-to-day -day basis it just changes how i react to certain situations i think my biggest challenge was work because work like i said earlier work was my biggest impact on my mental health and yet mental health was also impacting my work and i obviously haven't said but i progressed to a manager at sainsbury's and i was there full time but as a manager it was very hard for me to say look I'm really not okay and I need to step back. I did eventually, but I always, always, always feel that guilt. And I am leaving um, this job in a few weeks. So I'm hoping my next venture, it will be better for me. Um, and it's just a shame, I think, working for such big companies because in a company like Sainsbury's where they have an endless amount of employees and they are churning one person after another, you're just a number and it's very hard then even like in stores for people to be able to support you properly in the way you should be supported when it's such a big company that all they care about is money and that is the reality of it unfortunately i also wanted to talk about this so obviously like i said i haven't used this since last year and i really want to like especially reading for it now i should really get back into using this i did have a different one at the beginning oh, i just hit myself in the face keep saying i'm clumsy um i had a different one but then i wanted to buy something prettier and i got this little one with stars and it says never stop looking up which really is perfect but i wanted a dot like a dot um page because they're a bit better for like bullet journal like journaling um bullet journals and stuff but i very much believe in writing stuff down i believe in journaling like massively i think for mental health especially let alone day to day it's so important because it's something different about writing down and i i like i've always done this myself like i did this on my own back yeah my therapist at the time was quite happy with me doing this because she said you need to write your stuff down and i'm like go i already do <laughs> been doing this for a couple of years now um but even now i still buy like i bought like a, a five five minutes before you sleep journal um i love like gratitude journals I've got like a work life balance. I've got so many journals. Not like, a, admittedly, I don't fill them in as consistently as I should, but I am a strong believer that this helps. So for me, this journal was just personal. Um, I did this so I had everything written down to remember and also as well to reflect on. So I tracked my mood every day for 2019. I'd started it in February and I basically colour coordinate, like I showed earlier, I colour coordinate my mood and it was a great way to stop at the end of the day and think oh how were you feeling today and ask yourself that question and it's also good for me to look back and see if i've improved or if i've got worse if there's any patterns and stuff um i also stick like little quotes in here because i think that's nice um i used to just track everything track just as much as i can um 
I did like, a, like I've got a page about like when I'm feeling down, what I do to help. So I've got like go outside, take photos, um, eat a treat, and I draw like a donut <laughs> standard. Do my makeup, take a nap, watch a film. Like basically loads of things that will help me. Um, I've got my timeline. Um, when I was trying to work out my triggers, like my reasoning to why I am the way I am. And to be honest, if I did this now, it would get even longer. But I basically started up from when I was 13 years old, what triggered me back then and what has triggered me off since. Like rather than little triggers, the, the big stuff, the life changing things that have obviously impacted my mental health. Um, I then have got my li like little triggers, so things that trigger me on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I think it's really important that anyone that suffers with mental health, you understand what triggers you because one, to avoid stuff and two, to challenge it. Which I think, again, is a massive part of CBT is, right, okay, you don't want to do that. And anyone that deals with anxiety especially, I think it, like it's avoidance. It's avoidance of doing those things because they know you're going to trigger you. So how are you going to deal with that? And to know to do that you need to know what your triggers are in the first place um i've got my signs and symptoms for when i'm not okay so like i spoke about earlier when i'm like really down on my anxiety and stuff like what i won't do um i've got like a list of, so i've separated this i've done like a little bubble diagram and i've got like self-care so i've got i won't shower um make no appearance in my effort no make no effort in my appearance sorry um my skincare's poor, I stay in my PJs, I don't my makeup. Um, I've got my personality, which is like I stay silent, I don't talk, um, I go with daydreaming, I shut myself off, um, I have panic attacks, I have anxiety attacks, um, I seek reassurance from people, I um, have suicidal thoughts and self harm. I've got about sleep, and um, that's quite a big category for me because I either, I go uh, two ways basically, I either don't sleep at all or I just constantly sleep. <laughs> um, I get nightmares. When I'm stressed, I shout and talk in my sleep. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll constantly wake up in my sleep, like, you know, the usual just sleep dilemmas. Um, appetite, so I'll either, and again, this goes in opposite ways. I'll either eat loads of crap and just binge eat and binge eat, or I just don't eat and starve myself. And then motivation as well. So I've got motivation and how I don't want to do anything. Um, I'll just stay in bed and I'll just binge watch Netflix, YouTube and TV, which... I binge watch a lot anyway, so that's it steps it up when I'm sad. And um, the next page, I've got like a goals list, so what I want and I've, how I'm going to get there. And again, this is a massive part of CBT of setting goals, and this is what you should do. Unfortunately, these goals haven't worked out for me really because I've split up with Damien, and a lot of these revolve around him. Um, so unfortunately, that's not the way it is. So that's what I need to redo this and set some new goals. I think. Um, and then also I've got like a medical track tracker which is what i referred to earlier so i've got all my gp appointments my medication changes my therapy appointments um i then also i decided to write a page about cbt so i can always then go back and oh, uh, i've written a page about cbt just so i can always go back and look at this um and then i've got a bit about setting the goals so planning so i've got what what i want to do how difficult is it is it a priority what time scale am I giving it and complete? So it's all about like setting targets, basically. Obviously, like I said, I haven't really filled in this journal for over a, way over a year. So I do want to give this a big refresh. But what I'm going to do, I think, is give this a nice refresh, update it all. And then I'm going to do like a blog post on this because I want to try and encourage other people to do it. And then you can refer back to it if you want to join me in having a little mental health journal. It doesn't even have to be because you've got mental health issues, it can, it's just a well-being journal essentially. It's about putting thoughts on paper and tracking things and doing things you want to do, setting yourself goals because everyone should have a journal. <laughs> so I think I have spoke about everything on my mental health journey. Um, I think my next steps are going to be to redo my mental health journal to make sure I fill in my other journals as well. I'm going to need to set up a load of reminders. Um, Hopefully I might like, hopefully I do start therapy again, just cause I think it will help me. And yeah, hopefully work towards my life. So this is like my mental health, like story journey video. Um, obviously I haven't delved into like deep detail of what's happened in my life um, because we will be here for hours. <laughs> I will do like story times, I suppose. Um, possibly, this isn't definite. 
where I will talk about certain experiences and things I've gone through in my life more as a recommendation for people to not get into the same situations I've been in and also probably for the amusement of some people so I know this video may seem a little bit random to some hopefully to some others it may be relatable hopefully even helpful and if I'm honest I hope if I could at least inspire one person to seek help like if they need it or to speak to someone my like my inbox like on instagram or twitter or wherever is always open so if you ever want to just have a message just complete stranger about issues you have then feel free like i'll always respond um because i know sometimes it's hard like i said like i went for years suffering in silence and no one should have to do that and if it just means talking to a random person on the internet then so be it so thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and I'll really appreciate it. Um, please subscribe and also all my links to my socials are in the description box. And yeah, I'm sorry for it being a bit scatty, but my videos will improve in time. Like I said, I'm just being down to earth right now and I'm just chill. I'm not going to put pressure on myself with this. I'm just going to be talking. Yeah, so hope you're having a lovely week so far thank you for watching bye